Hi there and welcome to the Chemistry Academy. In this video we're going to look at advanced higher chemistry quantum numbers. So we're going to go through, this is just the way that I like to think of quantum numbers, there'd be other ways that you can go about learning it but this is just the way that I found it easiest to remember what all the quantum numbers were and how, them to, how to assign them to an electron. And so I hope this helps you if it's something that you're struggling with. So quantum numbers are essentially just ways for chemists to give electrons a number address. So like you have your own address, electrons have their address. So electrons are constantly orbiting nuclei of atoms and because they do sometimes act like defined particles but also sometimes they act like waves so you can't actually define them. All of the quantum numbers are essentially just possible locations that you could find an electron if you were looking for one. Um, so that's essentially all you really need to know about what the quantum numbers actually are, they're just addresses. So, but it does tie into the atomic orbital theory because it's telling us which atomic orbital the electron is in and essentially which direction is it moving around in that atomic orbital because like I said, electrons are constantly orbiting the nucleus. Um, so there are four numbers that get assigned to an electron and no two electrons can have the same set of four quantum numbers. So I will write them up on the board after we've done these examples, but there's three rules that you need to know when it comes to quantum numbers and atomic orbital theory. And the one that is related to the fact that no two electrons can have the same set of four quantum numbers is the Pauli exclusion principle. So the Pauli exclusion principle states that if electrons are paired within an atomic orbital, they must have opposite spins. And the reason that they must have opposite spins is because by having opposite spins, they then don't have the exact same set of four quantum numbers. So when I do examples here, that should make a bit more sense. So there are four quantum numbers. The first one is the principal quantum number, N. And I like to think of that as what energy level is the electron in. So remember, you're trying to assign the electron address. So the first thing we need to think about is well, what energy level is it in to start with. After that, we've then got the angular momentum quantum number, which is represented by the letter L. And that, to me, in my head, I think of what type of orbital is it in? Because within each energy level, we can have s orbitals, p orbitals, d orbitals, depending on what energy level you're in. Just remember, in the first energy level, there is only an s orbital. In the second energy level, you get an s and a p uh, orbitals. And then in the third energy level, that's when you get the s, the p, and then 3d. So the d orbitals don't start until you get to the third period. So is your electron in an s orbital? Is it in a p orbital? Is it in a d orbital? Or even is it in an f orbital? You'll probably not be asked anything about f orbitals. So you don't need to worry about that, but I've just put them there for consistency's sake. Then once we've assigned what type of atomic orbital it's in, we then look at the magnetic quantum number, which is, in my mind, what specific orbital is in within that subshell. So the collection of p orbitals can be known as the p subshell. And within that p subshell, we have px, py, and pz. All that means is which axis along the p is the p orbital lying. Is it across the x axis? Is it across the y axis? Or is it across the z axis? Um, so that's then what you're doing next. Is it in a px, py, pz? Or if it's in a d subshell, is it in the dz squared? Is it in the dx squared minus y squared? You get the idea. And then the last one that we assign is the spin, which is sometimes donated with ms or just s. And the spin you essentially just get to choose. You get to pick as either plus a half or minus a half. Um, so that's always the easy one to pick at the end. So if we then put this all of this into practice with some examples, hopefully it'll help make the questions make more sense. The other thing is, is that when it comes to assigning a set of quantum numbers, there never is only one specific right answer normally, unless you've been given a set of quantum numbers for an electron in the same atomic orbital, then the only thing that can be different is this last um, spin number here, because if they're in the same energy level, or if they're in the same specific orbital, in a specific subshell, in a specific energy level, then the only thing that can be different between them is this spin. 
So remember, the Pauli exclusions principle states that paired electrons within the same atomic orbital must have opposite spins because they can't have the same set of four quantum numbers. So let's have a look at these examples. If we have an electron in the 1s uh, atomic orbital, we can tell from the fact it's 1s that it's in the first energy level. So that means that our principal quantum number will be 1. Okay. So then if we go to the next one, the angular momentum, what type of atomic orbital is it in? Well, we can see here it's in an s orbital. And any, the quantum number we use for s is 0. So that means L has to be 0. Then we go on to the magnetic s quantum number. So if it's in an s orbital, there is only one type of s orbital. So then ML always has to be 0 because there's only ever one s orbital to choose from. We don't have like s, x, s, y, s, z, because the s orbitals are too basic in shape. And then for the spin, that's the easy one you just get to pick. So I'll pick plus a half. I always feel like this is the personality test because <laughs> are you positive or are you negative? So that's one possible set of quantum numbers for an electron in this atomic orbital. However, because every atomic orbital can hold two electrons, we could also have this set of quantum numbers. Oh, sorry. So instead of it being plus a half, it could be minus a half. And that's essentially the two the sets of quantum numbers for both electrons that can occupy the 1s atomic orbital. Let's have a look at the 2s. So this time the principal quantum number is going to be 2 because it's in the second energy level. I'm just going to line them here. Uh, next question, what type of orbital is it in? Well we can see that it's in an s orbital so that means that L needs to be 0. Which specific s orbital is it in? Well, there only ever is one type of s orbital, so that has to also be zero. And then in terms of the spin, again, we just get to pick. So we could pick plus a half, or we could pick minus a half, which means there's, for the other electron that can go into this orbital, that would be the set of quantum numbers for it. Okay. If we move on to the p's, so again, principal quantum number, it has to be 2 because it's 2p. What type of orbital is it in for L? When it's in a p orbital, we give it the number 1. So that means L has to be 1. Then when it comes to which specific one, we have three options. We have px, py or pz. So one gets assigned 0 and the other ones get minus 1 and plus 1. So it kind of just staggers either side of 0. So you could pick any of those three. So I'll just pick minus 1. And then, again, picking the spin, let's pick plus a half. However, we could also have, again, picked minus a half. But it still could have been in the px orbital in the 2p subshell, so that could have been the other possible set of quantum numbers. But again, we could have picked py, so we could have made this zero, but then this would still have been 2 and this still would have been 1. And then again, we can just pick whichever spin we want. So you can see that there's actually going to be six different possible quantum number sets for the electrons that are within a 2p orbital because there are three different types of orbital and within each of the specific types of atomic orbital there's two possible spins states. So we end up with six and a possibility of six different quantum number sets you could pick if you're asked for the quantum numbers of a two electron in a 2p subshell. So I'll just write them all out just so you can see all the possibilities. So it's still the second level, it's still a p orbital, but we could have a, an l being plus, a, plus one, and then we'll just pick plus a half, but it could also be minus a half within the pz. Okay, so that's the six possible quantum numbers for an electron occupying a 2p subshell. So then when it comes to the 3D, what energy level it's in, it's in the third. It's in a D orbital, and when it's a D orbital, L is 2. There are five D orbitals, so we can pick from minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, or plus 2. So I'll just pick 
to minus two, and then again, we can pick the spin. So plus a half, or we could have had minus a half, and all of these would have been the same. So because there are five different types of d orbital, um, <laughs> there is actually 10 possible sets of quantum numbers for an electron that's in the 3D subshell. Um, so I won't write them out all out just now, but I will write them all out and put them in the screenshot um, just so you can see. But don't memorise all the possible quantum numbers for the electrons in each of these subshells. Just learn these questions. Learn the order of assigning the electrons address. So what energy level it is, in, is it in? What type of orbital is it in? And that bit we get from the question. And then after that, you get to pick based on what the possible options are for like how many of those types of orbitals do you get. So this is the only bit you really kind of need to remember, I guess. And then the spins, like I said, always the easy bit. Um, the other rules, which again, I'll write down on another screen. So we've got the Pauli exclusion principle, which is to do with the paired electrons requiring opposite spins because no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. We've also got the if by principle, so that's where the electrons have to occupy the orbitals in order of increasing energy. So the electrons have to go into the 1s first, then they go into the 2s, then they go into 2p, then they'd go into 3s and then they'd go into 3p. So that's if you are that's more to do with then assigning the electron configuration. So if you want more help with that, you can go and check out my tutorial video on electron configurations. And then I lost my train of thought there. Yes, sorry. And then there's the Huns rule, which again is more to do with assigning to the electron configurations. But that's where the electrons will singly occupy degenerate orbitals. Remember, degenerate means equal in energy. And so they'll occupy the, singly occupy the degenerate orbitals with parallel spins. So if you have electrons singly occupying degenerate orbitals, they would all need to have a plus a half spin first, or they would all have to, to have to have a minus a half spin first um, before they then start pairing up. But like I said, I'll write those on a screen and put it at the end for you to copy down. But there is more on those rules in the electron configuration tutorial because it's more kind of related to that than just the quantum numbers. But I hope that helps you assign your electron addresses for your SQA advanced higher chemistry exam. If you did find this helpful, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all soon.